let's start with the question number 4 from the unit 9 and 10 this is from the chapter nuclei so here calculate the half life that is half life t half and mean life tau you can use to represent the mean life of radium 226 of activity 1 curie so activity we usually represent uh, as A is given as 1 curie curie is not the standard unit or SI unit of activity or disintegration per second uh, so 1 curie is 3.7 into 10 to the power 10 equivalent and you can also call it as disintegration per second so this is activity given the mass of radium 226 is 1 gram so mass of radium 226 is 1 gram and 226 gram of radium consists of 6.023 into 20 to the power 23 atoms that is nothing but it consists of I will get a number of atoms that is 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 atoms in a given mass. Okay. So using this uh, data, we have to find out the half life then the mean life. So half life is there any direct relation between the half life and these quantities? We find no. So half life can be calculated using the formula T half is equal to 0 0.693 divided by lambda where lambda represents D A constant so now if uh, what can I say is if I able to find out this D K constant I can find out the half life let's see is there any relation of course we have with the activity activity A is equal to lambda into n so a is the activity lambda is the decay constant and n is the number of atoms in the given sample that is one gram sample so how to find out n yes n can be found by taking the mass of given sample divided by atomic mass and multiply it by Avogadro number. So by taking the mass and dividing it by atomic mass of the radium and multiplying it with the Avogadro number, we can able to calculate the number of atoms in the given mass of radium 226. So I calculate M and I have already A, then I can find out lambda. If I find out lambda, I can able to find out the uh, Half life and then mean life. Let's find out n. Okay, n is equal to m that is 1 divided by 222, sorry, 226 into 6.023 into 10 to the power 23. So let's solve this. So 6.023 divided by 226 we get it as 0.02665 into 10 to the power 23 I can write it as 1, 2, 3 so 26.65 into 10 to the power 20 this is the number of atoms this much of atoms is there in the given mass of radium 226 so you got n we have a let's find out lambda so lambda is equal to a divided by n that is activity divided by the number of atoms so activity is 1 curie that is 3.7 into 10 to the power 10 whole divided by n that is 26. 65 into 10 to the power 20 so again lambda is equal to obviously 10 to the power minus 10 uh, 20 goes upwards 10 minus 20 is minus 10 so 3.7 divided by 26.65 
again it has 0. Point, sorry 26.65 0. 0.138 into 10 to the power minus 10 uh, dk constant the unit is per second the unit is per second so we got lambda then we can easily find out the half life so t half is equal to 0. 0.693 divided by 0. 0.138 into 10 to the power of minus 10 becomes plus 10. So what we get 0 0.693 divided by 0 0.138, which approximately it is 5 into 10 to the power 10 seconds. 5 into 10 to the power 10 seconds. So we are done with the half life. Then we need to find out mean life. So mean life is also related to the dk constant that is mean life is equal to 1 by lambda mean life is equal to 1 divided by lambda that is 1 divided by 0 0.138 so we get it as uh, 1 divided by 0 0.138 into 10 to the power minus 10 so approximately we get 0 point sorry 7.25 into 10 to the power 10 seconds so we can easily understand that the answers are right in some, uh, some way easy the mean life is greater than the half life so you can say uh, they are almost I can say yeah maybe right so you can cross check it this is regarding the concept of half life and mean life of radium 226 and the given activity is 1 cube. We are under this one, uh, we have calculated the values required using the formulas. So let's move on to the next question. Let's continue with the question number 5. This is asked in uh, March 2016 from the unit 9 and 10. And this question is from Artworks. A very simple one. Calculate the shortest and longest wavelengths of Volmer series of hydrogen atom. Shortest and longest wavelengths of Volmer series of hydrogen atom. Okay, Volmer series. To calculate the wavelength, the shortest and longest wavelength, the formula we have is 1 by lambda is equal to general formula. You can call it as uh, the Warmer equation 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. Okay, this we use for Warmer series n1 is 2. For Warmer series n1 is 2. For short test, for short test wavelength. Shortest wavelength. Shortest wavelength. N2 is equal to infinity. For shortest wavelength, N2 is equal to infinity. Uh, let's find out the shortest wavelength first. Then we we'll go for the longest wavelength. Uh, let's substitute this value 1 by lambda is equal to R value that is 1.097 into 10 to the power 10 uh, 1 by uh, 2 square that is 4 minus 1 by infinity that is going to be 0 so what happens 1 by lambda is equal to 1.097 into 10 to the power 7 divided by 4 uh, lambda in it lambda is equal to 4 divided by 1.097 to 10 to the power 7 so let's solve this what we get 4 divided by 4 divided by 1.097 yeah we get it as 
3.646 into 10 to the power minus 7 the shift of course so finally I can write the shortest variable lambda is equal to 3.364.6 into 10 to the power minus 7 or 364.6 into sorry this has become 9 you can write it as nanometer so this is the shortest wavelength of Bormann series and uh, as you know the Bormann series lies in lies in visible region the shortest wavelength corresponding to visible region is 364.6 nanometer will be the rate of 3 digits uh, without decimal point and nanometers ok so then we are done with the shortest wavelength we need to calculate the longest wavelength. Let's do this. For longest wavelength of Bormann series, wavelength of Bormann series, so n1 is equal to 2, n2 is equal to 3. The very next, uh, this can also, uh, the longest wavelength can also be called as first line, first line of Bormann series of hydrogen part. So then 1 by lambda, the longest wavelength is equal to 1.097 and 1 by 4 minus 1 by 9. Let's solve this. Okay, here. Sorry. 1.097 into 10 to the power 7. So 1 over lambda is equal to 9 minus 4 is 5 divided by 36. So 1.097 into 10 to the power 7 multiplied by 5, 4 divided by 36. So finally, I need lambda, which becomes 36 divided by 1.097 into 10 to the power 7 into 5. Okay, guys, let's solve this. Uh, 1.097 into 5. So we get it as 36 divided by 36 divided by 4 minus 7 you can write it as divided by 5.485 so finally I get 36 divided by 5.485 is lambda is equal to 6.563 into 10 to the power minus 7 and 656.3 into 10 to the power minus 9 656.3 nanometer. This is the longest wavelength of normal series of hydrogen R. So remember the shortest wavelength uh, we should use N2 as infinity not only for Bormann series, if it is shortest wavelength for any of the spectral series like Lyman, Passion, P1, bracket. So n2 becomes infinity. The longest wavelength will be the very next number. If it is n2, it is going to be 3. If n1 is equal to for Raymond series, n1 is 1, the n2 can be 2 for longest wavelength with the very next line. Let's move on to the next numerical. Let's start the question number 7 from the last two unit, that is unit 9 and 10. It's a question from Adams. The first member of Bormann series of hydrogen atom has wavelength of 6,563 angstrom. So, lambda one, uh, Bormann series of hydrogen atom. I take it as lambda one. 6,563 angstrom that is in 10 to the power minus 10 meter. Calculate the wavelength and frequency of second member of same series that is lambda 2 the second member of same series we have to calculate our, our also the frequency we call it as mu 2 so once we calculate the wavelength it is easy to calculate the frequency so using this uh, we have to calculate lambda 2 and uh, mu 2 of course we can never to calculate it directly uh, for second member, n1 
one is equal to two, that's for normal series. Second member, n two will be equal to four. You can calculate it directly, but still we should make use of this given value. So we make use of this given value in the equation, and we can able to find out the Rydberg constant. Then we go for calculating lambda two. Okay, the general equation what we have is one by lambda is equal to r into one by n one square minus one by n two square. Okay, lambda one that is for first member of hydrogen atom. We have uh, n one is equal to two, n two is equal to three. So let's uh, find out the value of R. That is one over six thousand five hundred and sixty-three into ten to the power minus ten is equal to R into one by four minus one by nine. So let's solve this. Uh, can write six thousand five hundred and sixty-three into ten to the power minus ten. R into nine minus four that is five. Five divided by thirty-six. I can write. Since I need R, I can write as R is equal to thirty-six divided by six thousand five hundred and sixty-three into ten to the power minus ten into five. So I'm solving this. We have to get it as. 1.097 to the power 7 per meter. So solving these values, we get as 1.097 into 10 to the power 7 per meter. Now using this Rydberg constant, let's find out the values of uh, lambda two and mu. So the wavelength of second member of Bonnier series. For second member, n one is two, n two will be equal to four. N one is equal to two, n two is equal to four. So we get one by lambda two. Let it be r that is one point zero nine seven one by four minus one by Sixty. Okay, almost there. One by lambda two is equal to. Let us go seven. We have one point zero nine seven into ten to the power seven. Twelve divided by sixty-four. So sixteen minus four that is twelve divided by sixty-four. Finally, I can write lambda two can be calculated as. Sixty-four divided by one point zero nine seven into ten to the power seven into twelve. So solving this, Let's calculate the frequency. How they are related is C is equal. 
equal to mu lambda. So mu two will be equal to c divided by lambda two. So that is three into ten to the power h divided by four eighty six point one seven into ten to the power minus nine. So what we get for solving this? So we get it as. Six point one seven. So one two three six point one seven. If you take the power forty hertz, we have to six point one seven. If you take the power forty hertz, that's the frequency corresponds to the second member of the Bormann series. So we can able to calculate the wave length of second member of Bormann series. Now, so the corresponding frequency. So let's go for the next human.